and for Debian. And then we have a you know, brief update on financial status. There's nothing there that hasn't already been published in one of Michael's um, treasurer's reports. Um, but it, there are a couple of interesting things, I think, uh, for the Debian project to think about there, and then we'll open it up for questions and answers. Um, as already mentioned, uh, I serve as president, Jörg as uh, uh, vice president, uh, Jimmy as uh, secretary, and, and Michael as treasurer at the moment. Um, in addition to Luke, Martin, and Neil, we also have Joshua Drake, um, who represents, I think, primarily the PostgreSQL community on the board, um, and David Graham, who I think many of you know from um, his long involvement with us and with OFTC and, and, and other projects that are of interest to us. So what is SPI? Well, SPI stands for Software in the Public Interest. Um, it's a nonprofit uh, corporation organized in the United States um, under the U.S. Internal Revenue Service tax laws as a 501c3, which means we are an educational-oriented uh, uh, nonprofit corporation. Uh, and the primary benefit of that is that people in the United States who choose to make donations to the various projects that are associated with SPI can gain some tax benefit from doing so. Um, the deductions are generally considered uh, tax deductible, though the exact rules are something that we always suggest people talk to their individual uh, tax accountants or lawyers about and, and not take our word on. Um, and, you know, in terms of what we actually do, we are an organization that holds um, funds and other assets um, that need some legal, uh, legally existing entity to hold them on behalf of Debian and our other projects. Um, an example of the kind of assets we're talking about is trademark registrations, um, domain name registrations, and things like this that need some legally existing person or uh, entity to hold them, um, at least in the United States. Um, from a historical standpoint, SPI was incorporated on the 16th of June in 1997 as a nonprofit organization in the state of New York. Um, in 1999, which is, you know, two years later, which is about how long it takes, the U.S. Internal Revenue Service determined that SPI does qualify for 501c3 tax status, which, as I said, means that contributions from donors in the U.S. may be tax deductible. And while it was originally started to serve a, a very specific Debian need, which was to have a legal entity in the U.S. that could hold uh, these various properties for Debian, uh, SPI was originally crafted with a larger vision um, and it has grown to serve many significant free software projects. And, you know, I've got a cute screen full of logos here, which I'll spin around and let you see, just so you get some sense of how crowded the, the sort of list of associated projects is getting to be. We've got uh, Debian freedesktop.org, um, Fresco, which, even though they aren't very active anymore, it seems, is, is still an associated project. Open Vast, Tux for Kids, um, Gallery, the Open Voting Foundation, OpenWRT, PostgreSQL, Drupal, the Mad Wi-Fi Project, Privoxy, OFTC, OpenOffice.org, I forget what, all right, GNU TexMax and, and Helios, right. We also have just offered associated project status to the Open64 project, which is a GCC-derived compiler uh, with various backend optimizations for 64-bit uh, systems, which, among other things, is being used heavily by the people in the OS Unix project, which is attempting to build an um, uh, open group uh, Unix certification mark compliant version of the Open Solaris operating system. Uh, OS Unix has also approached us about the possibility of associated member status, and we're currently engaged in uh, discussions with um, our legal counsel at the Software Freedom Law Center and elsewhere to understand whether, in fact, um, that's a good thing for us to pursue. Uh, this is an interesting case because of the um, blending of components in that operating system under different licenses, specifically the CDDL and GPL, uh, which there has long been a question about the legality of. So one of the things that's, I think, going to happen sometime in the next month is that we get something approximating a final reading um, from the SFLC, who also, of course, serve as um, counsel for the Free Software Foundation on you know, how we should think about these particular sorts of combinations of license and you know, that may allow us to um, bring that proposal for associated project status to a vote in August or, or September. I uh, will just have to wait and see. 
Um, but I think the, the key message here is that we are now providing these legal and financial existence services uh, to a significant number of very important um, free software projects, not just Debian. From a financial standpoint, um, as of the 30th of June, I believe these numbers were, the total holdings in SPI um, on behalf of our various associated projects was just over $231,000 US, of which $142,814.60 was being held in trust for Debian. Um, now, of course, that number will be in flux a little bit because all of the people who paid professional or corporate uh, registrations for DebConf in the US and I suppose in some other countries um, uh, and, and various sponsors of this event uh, have been routing those funds through SPI and um, so you know that number will float up and down a little bit but I think the key message here is that Debian has now accumulated well in excess of hundred thousand dollars in uh, financial asset that's being held by SPI in the US and you know that represents uh, roughly half of the total SPI um, asset holdings at the moment. Um, the next largest, uh, just for comparison, is PostgreSQL with about $30,000 US, and the rest of them are all below 10. So <clears throat> this raises an interesting question, and I think um, uh, Steve intends to, to have a session sometime later in the week to talk about um, you know, w brainstorming things that Debian might do with this. You know, people ask me, well, you know, how much money is that really? And the answer that I give is that $142,000 US is not enough to mount a significant legal defense against any kind of an attack that Debian might um, be subjected to. Um, on the other hand, we don't currently have anything on the horizon that we believe might result in a legal attack on Debian. And so whether we need to think about that as a possible use of the money seems a little nebulous. It's also interesting to me to note that all of this money has been raised without ever actually asking anybody to donate money to Debian. People use the project, they find out that you know, there's a mechanism for contributing financially and they decide they want to do that. And right now today, even though there have been various expenditures authorized over the years by various DPLs, including Steve and myself way back when and so on, um, the rate of income has always exceeded the rate of expenditure, so we have been gradually increasing this balance over time. Um, there are a couple things I think we can take from that. One is um, that I think it would be completely okay for us to come up with some reasonable use for $100,000 or so and do something with this money. Um, the second thing that it leads me to believe is that were we ever to face some kind of some substantial financial need, if we actually did ask people to donate money to Debian, um, I think we could expect to be able to generate a really substantial income stream from people who you know, care enough about the project to want to donate. We have to date never actually, to the best of my knowledge, asked anybody to give money to Debian with the exception of the sort of offer that was extended during the, um, uh, the dunk tank um, experiment uh, to whether people wanted to support that. Um, and at the end of the day, I think the, the one thing we learned from that whole experience is that while there are probably good ways to spend money in Debian, that that's really not one of them. Um, I'll point out also that when you read our financial status reports, which are posted to, I guess, they end up on the SPI private list once a month. And the, and the meeting agenda is also. And the meeting agendas and so forth. Um, that when you read this, there is a line called general reserves and the way to read that is that's the money that SPI is holding on behalf of SPI. And with many of our um, associated projects, we set up a mechanism by which we in effect skim off a few percent of their incoming donation stream to generate enough um, cash to be able to do things like pay for the bookkeeping, accounting, and, and tax filing, things that we have to do. Um, so far, the vast majority of the actual work being done in um, SPI on behalf of our associated projects has been by volunteers, but there's certainly a sense that there have been some proposals that have flowed through. Uh, in particular, the Open Voting Foundation was last year um, pursuing a grant application where if that grant had come to pass, uh, I think we would have expected a need to uh, rent an office and have a full-time office management administrative assistant kind of person on behalf of SPI. But the deal that was being worked on was that if that grant went through, 
um, they would make enough operating you know, cash available from that grant for us to be able to do that on their behalf. So at the end of the day, um, right now, uh, financially, we're in great shape. There's just over 33,000 in that general reserve pool, which is certainly more than enough for us to have a reasonable cushion for all of the anticipated things that we might need to spend money on, and yet it's not such a ridiculously large amount that I'm embarrassed to have that much sitting around in SPI's general reserves. I think over time we will think about whether um, there's a need or desire to adjust that percentage that we're charging as overhead to the various projects. Um, if that number continues to go up and we don't come up with other ways to spend it, then obviously that money ought to be put back into circulation for use by the various free software projects that we support. But uh, we'll see how this goes going forward. Are there any questions about that? I, you know, if you want to, um, out of curiosity, how many of you are SPI members? Anybody not an SPI member in the room maybe is a better way to ask? One or two, okay. Um, you know, anyone who is expressed enough interest to be here in this room today certainly ought to go sign up as an SPI member. And I would argue that anyone who's attending DebConf probably has completely valid grounds for requesting contributing membership status, which as I'll explain in a minute, uh, does confer a, couple, confer a couple of benefits, one of which you could actually take advantage of right now. So with respect to SPI membership, anybody who agrees with the principles of SPI is eligible and encouraged to apply for membership. Um, those who participate actively in the free software community may acquire, may apply for having their membership elevated from general membership to uh, contributing membership, which principally con conveys the additional right to vote in things that uh, SPI sees a need to vote on. Um, today, that's primarily the opportunity to vote on who should be on the board of directors. There is a board of directors election underway right now, and so um, I would encourage all of you who are contributing members who have not already done so to go vote. Um, I, I think it's probably a good time for us to put a reminder out on our various uh, mailing lists that we have an election underway. Um, we typically have a very low voter turnout. I'm pleased that this year we've already got something like twice as many votes as we acquired in total last year in our board election. Um, but the percentage is still very low. I would encourage all of you to take a couple minutes and go rank your preference among the available candidates. We do currently have 824 members, of whom 392 are non-contributing and 432 are in the contributing level. All of those numbers are up 7 or 8% from this time last year. So we do see, you know, a gradually increasing membership, which I think is great. And um, the URL for finding out about membership is spi-inc.org slash about-spi slash membership. Yes, if we could find some more punctuation to put in there, we would. In terms of getting involved, um, you know, all of our board meetings are held in the open on IRC. The channel is hash SPI on the OFTC network. Um, discussions are held on a number of mailing lists. Um, you can find those mailing lists and information about how to join them at lists.spi-inc.org. Um, and I really encourage you to take advantage of the fact that we have seven of the current nine um, board members present this week at DebConf. Um, that may seem unusual. We actually had six of the nine present last year in Mar del Plata. And I think on one hand, this is really great. It's, it's wonderful to see this many members of the board who are actually actively engaged in free software work to the level that they're willing to, you know, to take the time and the energy and the expense to attend an event like this. On the other hand, it does suggest that we still have a pretty strong you know, Debian-oriented bias in the uh, group of people who are running SPI. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I certainly, you know, for all of the other folks who may end up um, hearing about this meeting or, or listening to a replay or something like that, I strongly encourage members of our other associated projects to also uh, consider running for the board or in other ways becoming active in the project. Um, we think we do a passable job of providing a balanced set of services to all of our projects, but it would be wonderful to have uh, more representation and more active participation from some of the other projects. So at that point, that's really all the sort of background contextual information that I wanted to provide. Uh, we would be completely happy to take any questions that you might have about SPI, take advantage of the fact that we're all here, and, and if there are things that we could do differently or better that you would appreciate, uh, please let us know that. If there are other things, feel free to ask. Now that I've all stunned you into a stupor,
Andrew, are you grabbing the mic to ask something or just to? Just oh, just to turn the mic on. Great. Okay. Someone have a question? Please, someone have a question. It's one of these. <laughs> my, my, this is going to be a very quick buff, isn't it? I mean, if everything we're doing is wonderful, that's not actually not bad feedback to have. On the other hand, it doesn't seem to mirror what we hear on our mailing list. So, Steve. Yeah. That, it's working. Oh, yes. Fine. People can hear me, I guess. Yeah. So we have two of the three people standing in the election are in the room right now, I guess. Do you want to tell us what you could plan to do if you were elected? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I would certainly be okay if they want to. On the other hand, I'll point out that we actually had some conversation amongst ourselves last night about sort of how proper it was for us to you know, even be pointing to the fact that there was an election on, given that we already sort of have this very pro-Debian bias in the board, and, you know, folks that are here are more likely to be Debian people, blah, 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 blah. Um, as I just said, I personally don't think this is an issue, but I just want to point out to everybody that this is something that we've thought about, um, and if you're concerned about it, fine. If you're not, then I'm not either. So those who are standing for the board include Michael. I'm Michael Kopeis. I'm rerunning for the SCI uh, Board of Directors. I've been the current SCI Treasurer for the past two years. I was also serving as Assistant Treasurer under the past two SBI Treasurers. And if re-elected, I'm interested in continuing on as SBI Treasurer. Uh, I'm Jonathan McDill. I'm also standing. Um, I wouldn't say I was a candidate for change. I think SPI do a reasonable job. I think they've got increasingly better at it over the past few years. And I suppose I stepped up when it looked like there was going to be one person to be positioned and I didn't want to that good work on that. So I would uh, like to help them in doing the good work, but I don't have any huge agenda for change. Yeah, and voting in SPI elections is really quite straightforward. If you're a contributing member, there's a web-based voting mechanism. The voting is a preferential system, similar to but slightly different from Debian's. Um, go read the platforms, make decisions about who you prefer, and rank the candidates in your order of preference, and that's all it takes. It should take, you know, five or ten minutes at most if you haven't already voted. And how long is the election running until? 28th. The 28th? Right. Right, so still have a day or two left, I guess. Though I must admit it's DebConf, so I have no idea what day it is or what time <laughs> it is. <or laughs> and someone just said, oh, gee, it's time for buff. Other questions? I guess one for the, for the attendees, what made you all want to uh, come to this buff anyway? <laughs> There's, no. there's been no heckling yet, though. I mean, if you're going to come to heckle, at least, you know, give it a... Uh, I came along um, because I think SBI is, is doing a good job, uh, but it's an interesting and growing uh, organisation, and I wanted to hear what you guys had to tell us about that, and I have, and so that's good. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I, I guess I, 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 it's probably worth saying that, you know, we've had some discussions over the last couple of years um, on the board at least, and, and to some extent in the private mailing list, which is the one that all contributing members are, are invited to participate in, um, we've had some discussion about, you know, should SPI be trying to do more things? And I've had a very simple attitude about that. If there are things that SPI contributing members would like to do and do in the name of SPI and they're in alignment with our charter, then wonderful. But um, I have a very low tolerance for the behavioral model of people telling other people what they think the other people ought to do. 
Um, this is just not a very effective way for collaborative, you know, volunteer-oriented organizations to work. And so uh, when we've had people who've said, you should do this, you should do that, um, my reaction has been sort of ho-hummish. Uh, my personal sense is that what's absolutely vitally important is that we carry out the fundamental mission and the sort of basic expectations of uh, you know, f uh, fiscal accountability and asset management on behalf of the associated projects that we've committed to do. If we're doing a good job of that, then we're crossing the sort of threshold of acceptable and reasonable behavior um, as an organization and a board. Um, there are certainly opportunities for uh, contributing members to, to do all sorts of other things. We intentionally crafted uh, SPI back in the day with, uh, with one of those sort of expansive charters that gives us the opportunity to participate in all sorts of um, advocacy and education and communication processes around uh, the development of free software. But um, there are enough other organizations out in the world that are also interested in pursuing some of these that you know, the extent to which I think it makes sense to do this would be the extent to which we have both motivated and committed individuals who want to do it and for which there isn't some other existing venue that's already better suited. I'm actually perfectly okay if SPI is one of those organizations that gen generally is not in the news very much and is just quietly and competently doing the things that you know, we have committed to do on behalf of our projects. On the other hand, I'm equally happy if we end up in a situation where um, there are things that we ought to take stands on or there are you know, other activities that we ought to engage in. But um, suggestions of that kind should come with some kind of a, a willingness to get the right resources together and make it happen, not just, you know, brainstorming. Though brainstorming is certainly okay, too. And if we, you know, this, this kind of a bop is a great place for us to talk about things that, you know, might be interesting to pursue and to see whether there are others who are interested enough to want to, you know, bring the resources together to do it. So, Bill. I'm, I'm being forced to talk here. Yeah, I, th go for I it, think man. this bop is just a demonstration that if you get absolute silence, then it's a massive and rousing uh, applause. And okay. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks much for that. Any other questions? People waking up and tongues getting loosened or not? If not, that's fine. We can all break and go do something else. But, well, Steve. A full What's that? Applause for most of you, at least. <laughs> okay, anything else? Um, of course, uh, one of the issues that I have brought to the board, um, and we're, we're asking for legal advice about at the moment, I'm actually just curious to, to, to know what, uh, what the, the board think as well is we have developed a from the ground who would like to join that year. Um, and we're a little bit concerned about um, whether or not that could potentially cause problems with that year SPI due to the weird wonderful US legislation. Um, I guess what do you guys think?
construed as an official opinion of SPI without consulting our legal counsel, which I believe is underway in this case. But I will note in passing that the bulk of the legal language in the U.S. relates to um, control of exports to those um, that short list of countries. It's not. It has never been clear to me personally that that represented any prohibition on taking things from contributors in those countries. And it's also completely clear to me that SPI exists not to be the sole legal and financial existence facility for Debian, but rather to render those services within the U.S. and you know, related economic systems. So um, I think Ian has hit on what is probably the key element here, which is um, whether, in fact, SPI is being asked to do anything on behalf of these situations or not. I'll stop there before I get myself in legal trouble. I would love to visit most of the countries that are on that list, by the way, personally. <laughs> certainly a hole in my um, personal travel history with her. And I will just reiterate that all the FBI has been asked to do so far is answer the question for Debbie in this regard. And yeah, I'm going to stop there too. But we, we haven't been asked to actually take or veto any other action just by the advice so far. I don't think it would be appropriate for us to. I mean, we have taken, we've historically taken the stand that it's not our job to tell our associated projects what they should do or how they should run themselves. We constrain ourselves to ensuring that the activities they ask us to engage in on their behalf are legal and within the confines of the tax code under which we're organized. So. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for being here this morning. I think all of us will be around for the rest of the conference, so please feel free to catch us you know, in the hallways or something if there are other things you'd like to discuss. Um, please, you know, if you aren't already a member, go do the minimal stuff required to become a member. If you are a contributing member and you're not voted in the current election, please consider taking the time to do that. And uh, we look forward to seeing all